What is going on, YouTube? Hope you guys are doing fantastic today. It is tier list season, and we're going to be doing a support tier list. I would do an entire god tier list, but I want to wait until probably the next patch, or maybe at least bonus notes to do the, the full tier list, because I want it to last for the rest of the year, so you guys can check in with it and always kind of have a mostly accurate tier list. If there's a massive god change or something, maybe I talk about it in a specific video where like, this is the tier list, but I'm going to talk about this god, whatever it is, but I'm going to wait probably till the next one to do an entire god tier list. For now, we're going to do supports, because you guys love talking about supports. I got 30 gods I'm going to be ranking, all gods that are good and have been good in the past, and we'll see which ones have stood the test of time and which ones have not and they've aged poorly all right here's the tier list the five ways i'm going to be ranking them i think s to d tier is always okay but i think it's better to have why they're in that and then i can talk about why they're in this tier like the ss tier is always great you can pick this character very few counters if there is a counter it's like a soft counter always good is there may be some counters but you can at least get some value out of this god can be valuable is it's like the halfway point of there are some gods that can, can kind of smoke you and make you uh, a lot less strong. And then there's also some gods where you're still going to be great and you're going to have a lot of value. Can be a counter is usually you don't want to be picking this god unless you're picking towards the bottom. And there's some gods they have on the enemy team that you can counter pick. And then the stay away tier, which probably only going to be two or three gods. Maybe I get a little, little trigger happy and I toss like 17 in there, but we'll see. Uh, this is going to be a ranked tier list. So this is not competitive. If you guys want a competitive tier list for supports and, and kind of what I think for maybe your SOC, SEC games, and maybe SPL, if you guys are curious what I think about that. But this is just going to be ranked, and I'm going to try to make it as even as possible from bronze all the way up to diamond, but it is very hard to rank accurately at bronze and at diamond and at master. So as you know, maybe I just mentioned something like this god is really good at so-and-so level and bad at the other one. But yeah, let's just jump right in, starting with Aphrodite. I think Afro and... I'm going to group her with Hell right off the bat. I think they're both valuable picks at some points. I think that they are still very great characters at what they do. They make it very obnoxious to play into them. Tank healers that are very hard to put down. They both also lane really well, which is like a deceptive thing. You think about Afro Hell, they don't lane very well. No, that's actually wrong. They win a lot of 2v2s. There's some they lose. A lot of the lane dominant gods probably have a lot of kill potential onto them. But for the most part, they can lane okay against everyone and they can lane great against all the other ones i'm gonna put in can be valuable they lack in cc so if your team's just getting ran down and you don't have any peel you're gonna feel a lot worse but if your team has some engage some damage some cc and then you can just be helping your hyper carries or helping your carries in the back line that's when they feel the best but they do solve just a few counters that either stomp them in laning phase or make them just very hard to play at any point in the game aries aries buffs put him into the always great tier. This character's old weaknesses used to be, if he fell behind, he's useless. Now, his 20% CC, or 20% uh, damage reduction in his ult makes him so hard to burst down, even if he's behind. If his one isn't having a ton of abilities, a ton of levels into it, it still does solid damage, but he has utility outside of that in his two. His two makes his teammates tankier, makes them do more damage. It allows you to go to objectives also, and to bait them into the objective and either burn it or fight after because you're going to be tankier you're going to be giving hp5 you're going to be giving auto attack damage his two is sick sick for objectives because that's everything you want you want your mage to be able to just put base abilities and just auto attacks into this gold fairy or this fire or this pyro and that's what Ares allows and it still allows you to burn objectives i think shoguns is nearly an auto buy at him on him at this point it's also an aura so it also gives him a little bit of power but he feels great Ares is in a really great spot he's always great ah uh, okay well i didn't think about her when i said stay away she is just so bad in support rdo is she has some okay solo lanes but most of the time i'm not picking rdo if i pick rdo i'm just trying to play like a solo lane and just maybe hope i can get a kill and get ahead because if you don't get a kill you are useless. You need to kill and you need to put the enemy behind while also getting ahead yourself. So it's really bad, really risky, and a lot of the time there's very little payoff. Even if you do get ahead, you die one time, you're instantly nine levels behind and you're useless. So stay away tier. RDO is dominating that tier right now. Athena. I think Athena is always good. I think she is a lot less one-dimensional than she used to be where it was just dash taunt, dash taunt, dash taunt, dash taunt. I really think it's deceptive putting the slow on the three. As of now, it's going to change in the next few months as people get used to it. People still aren't used to the three slowing. They might walk into it or walk through it and then get hit by it and get slowed. And it's kind of like that weird thing where people have to get adjusted to it. I think on top of that, if you're duo queued with somebody, she might be the best support to play. If your teammate's playing something Sir Ket, 
Kali, Wukong, and they're diving and they're getting kills, you just ult onto them and they're 1v5. They're playing an ADC like CERN and they're getting dove, you ult onto them, they, get, they 1v5. So all these types of things that Athena used to be able to do, which was basically just dash taunt, she now has a little bit more CC, even if it's soft CC outside of her dash taunt. Her dash isn't like a reliant thing now to get more CC off so she can hold it and makes her a little bit safer. Her ult is even more busted than it used to be. And on top of that, I think the items in the game right now are really good for her prophetic. She's really good with Pridwin. When she lands, she's going to be getting a lot of cooldown. So you can, she can spam abilities. And then she also lands with a shield, binding, shoguns, all different types of things. I think she feels really good right now. She does have some counters, but at least if you're getting counter picked, you'll still get some value out of your kit. Atlas, another always good. He does good damage. He has a very good laning phase, very good late game. Actually, I, I think he excels late game. If you get to late game as Atlas and you have just one damage item, you're going to be able to do enough damage to kill anyone on the enemy team that's not the solo or support. I mean, even if the jungler has like one or two defensive items, you still will do relevant damage to him where he cannot just trade with you for no reason, unless he has Bumbas, and then he's basically cheating because he's got damage and true damage and healing and cooldown resets. And at that point, it's just obnoxious. And nobody in a tank role wants to body some or fight somebody that has Boombas because that's just such a boring item. But for some reason, junglers like it and solo laners like it and they want it brought back. But not us. We don't like supports. Uh uh. Get Boombas out of here. Keep it out of here. Okay. But yeah, he has got a good laning phase. He's got a really good late game. I think he lacks in the CC or having CC immunity. If he gets CC'd, there's a good chance that he can just get bursted off of it. But he still feels good. And even if he is into a counter matchup like the Ares, he can still kind of live in that. He, he can kind of force people to, to try to commit to him, put his ult down, and then also burn the enemy while they're trying to burn him reducing their power, maybe making it so he lives through that, and then his team can get a good fight off of it. I think Alice is in a pretty good spot right now. Bacchus, another always good pick. I think his build right now is just insane. Double sack into a Pridwin, and then Sentinels, and then you can just go damage outside of those two items, or those four items. And just kind of like Atlas, his weakness is he doesn't have CC immunity, but he's got a stronger laning phase than Atlas and a slightly weaker late game, but it's not that much weaker. It's just he has to get a lot more involved in those fights where Atlas can just kind of toss his one and then two. Bacchus has to commit a little bit more, but Bacchus has a better laning phase. He's better early game. His level five, he's not reliant on like Atlas is. Atlas, a lot of times you're not winning fights unless the enemy gets thrown into tower or just kind of gets picked up and thrown and just eats a ton of damage. Bacchus doesn't necessarily need ult. He does a lot of damage, a lot of CC. He can turn 2v3s with how much damage and CC he has also. And if he gets a lead, Bacchus is very, very frustrating to play against. Baron, I've talked about it before. He's a really good pick into Emoja. And just about that, I think his counter picking kind of ends. He's got good picks into gods that don't have dashes, but a lot of supports have dashes. Decent into Eset if Eset is getting picked, but a lot of these gods just have dashes. Kabraken, I guess, doesn't, but Serb does, Charon does, Cthulhu does. Eset does not, Faf does, like there's so many dashes and, and stuff like that. So he has some bad matchups and I think that's kind of the reliant thing he's on. He can't just kind of sit back and poke because a lot of the times he just gets all in and bursted. But I think he has some good counter picks. So we'll put him in the, I can be a counter tier. Kabraken. I'll put Kabraken in always good, but I think his biggest thing is he's going to be a better solo laner than he's going to be support. And maybe maybe jungle. I think he's going to be a good jungler, but I think nobody's going to really try him as this hybrid jungler because of his clear. I think you maybe fall a bit behind because of how slowly he clears, but that mid game cab and late game cab is just insane with a couple damage items. So I think he's going to be better in solo for the most part, but he does still have a good laning phase. If he gets ahead, he's very obnoxious to play against. Same with Atlas and Bacchus. He has no CC immunity, so that is a big weakness. But even outside of that, a lot of the times if you're getting ulted or CC'd, it's a somewhat delayed ult that you can set up for and even try to bait the enemy into and then like wall them in. So if Ares walks up and just ults you, you can cage the Ares in and try to maybe burst him or, or put him into a spot where he's not as strong as you are or your team is. But I do think he has his weaknesses. I think he's beatable, but he's still just always going to be at least good. I'll put Serb and Cambia counter because I played him today. And by today, I mean <clears throat> Tuesday, September 5th around uh, noon. And he really felt okay. I played him into a Charon, which I thought was going to be a lot worse than it was, but it, it ended up being a pretty good feeling matchup. I went to Erosion. I had Pestiku too, because they had a lot of healing. And then I would just kind of play the middle parts of fights and just CC and, and stun people. And if I ever hit the Charon with my one and then an ult, he would die before he would even hit the ground. And I think a lot of the other supports have more instant dashes. So 
if you're in that little trading scenario, Karen can't instantly dash away. You can interrupt it. It's also, he's one of the few supports in the game that kind of wants to just trade and just jerk you off and beat you off. And Serb is another god that likes doing that. So I think he's a decent pick. I think he's got a lot of bad matchups. Like looking down the list, there's so many gods I wouldn't want to play him into. But there's a couple I think where he could be pretty strong. Karen, I'm committing to it. I think this character's busted. I've been holding uh, holding off for far too long. A lot of people have been saying he's like not very good, or a lot of people think he is really busted. And I was kind of sitting on the fence of, yeah, I can see both sides, but no, I'm calling it. Charon is busted. He trades in neutral way too well. He's a very good laning god. He's very good in the late game. He's very tough in 2v2s. He has CC immunity. He has a nice team fight ult. He's good around objectives. Very few weaknesses. I think his one weakness is no instant quick hard CC. So there's no like stun, no taunt. It's a silence. And then he has a root, but that's still, you kind of have to dash to the enemy. And at that point, it's not really instant unless they're right on top of you. And it's only a root. So it's not a hard CC. But other than that, he's got an insane kit. I think he's got very little downsides. I don't think he has a single counter in the game. I think he has some gods that are maybe a little bit more difficult to play against, but he dominates nearly every god in the game. And he's very good with nearly every god in the game. So this is why I added the stay away tier. We're going to do this because we'll talk about them together. They're solo laners. They don't have the kits they need for support. Not enough CC or they're not good early game or they just kind of lose. They don't know do what you need from a support or they need items or they need levels. A bunch of different reasons. Stay away. They're just not worth it. I think they... Cthulhu specifically could be okay, but it's just not worth it. Next up, Eset. I think she's slightly lower than the two other mages, uh, the two mage healers. I think she's closer to Baron where she has some okay matchups. God's like... Kepri, if you get ahead, Kepri's just going to kind of get rammed down. And a lot of other gods that don't have good CC to kind of dash taunt you like an Athena or Fafnir stun you, where you're able to get your ult up or you're able to get your threes down. I do think her build is very busted right now. I think Lonos is actually insane for Eset specifically. Eset and yeah, I guess really just Eset. I think she uses it better than nearly every god in the game. And then Prophetic, she's very good at getting stacks on, just like a lot of the other mages. And you can build whatever else you need beyond that. Binding, she procs well. Erosion, she procs pretty well. Archdruids, if you want a little bit of damage. Pretty win, she uses very, very well. So she's got a lot of good items. I just think a lot of gods just win laning phase versus her. And she becomes a character that you just kind of kill if she's behind. But if you're playing against something that doesn't have a great laning phase, if you're playing against like Geb, and you can just kind of clear and farm, or Kepri, and you can just kind of clear and farm you're going to feel really good. Fafnir, I'll put in can be valuable. He's skill shot reliant. Are you hitting your ones? Be honest with yourself. Are you hitting your ones? You're a support player. You're not hitting your ones. Can be valuable. If you're feeling yourself one day, lock in that Fafnir and run the game and then kind of put him away for a few more weeks because you, you, you got lucky. That's kind of how I feel with him. There's some games where you're hitting everything and Faf feels un incredible. And there's some games where you just kind of miss all your hammers and you're just absolutely useless. I think he is can be valuable. He has some good laning phases. Depends on the god he's kind of playing against. And then some gods just kind of run him down and beat him. And then he's behind. And then a Fafnir is behind. is just going to get bullied. Fenrir can be a counter. I don't know who he's countering, but he can... He stay away. Just stay away from him. Ganesh, I'm going to do always great. And it sucks putting this character in the always great tier but he's good not great but he's good he's probably great he's okay in laning phase but that's not really why you play him you want to get to five once you get to five you can kind of play however you want you can drop alts you can spam drop them you can just silence when people go in you can silence to try to blow up the enemy support your one is a, is a really strong ability your three is a really strong ability he's got some counters yes gods like Ares. if you get ahead on Ares and you're playing against ganesh you're just going to get mowed down but if the Ganesh gets ahead and Ares can't walk in and he just gets ulted, the Ares is going to feel like garbage. So he at least is always going to be a very good god. Some gods he'll do, do a lot better than uh, against and some gods he'll do pretty mediocre against. But I mean, he's always great. I'm going to do Geb into always good. I'm a Geb hater, personally. I would never ever play Geb and I would never ever say that Geb is good on stream. But for your guys' ranked games... Geb can be valuable. And by can be value, valuable, I mean always good. Very few downsides, except bad laning phase. If you get to mid game, you're a very good god. If you get to late game, you're probably one of the best supports. And if you get a lead, you're also one of the best supports. CC immunity, good CC. And if you have that one dumb...
Gaps on your team that's just running it down and inting, you can save him a lot of times. So Geb always gonna be good. Herc, I think Herkus can be a counter right now. He beats some gods, but you need to get ahead. If you don't get ahead, you're useless. I think his build right now is pretty bad. I wish it was a little bit better. I think Sekmets can be okay on him, but I think you need to get ahead, and then that's kind of like the RDO risk. I just think at a base level, an even Hercules does a lot more than an even RDO because you just fish for that two-one combo or even just a blink one or a blink two. And that just gives you a free pick. So I'll put him in can be a counter. If you can get ahead in landing phase and win landing phase, I think he's a lot better. Horus, he can be valuable in ranked because teammates don't use your f***ing ult. His two, his one, two, three is one of the best like ranked abilities in the, or, or one of the best groups of abilities in the game for laning phase. Nearly guaranteed to kill every time you lane with Horus. If you have a, at least a competent ADC that's not playing Jingwei. He does a lot of damage. He does a lot of CC and he's got a lot of utility in his kit. If you can get your teammates to just walk to you when you're ulting, he, he's a lot better. The problem is you can't rely on Dumb and Dumber to do what you want them to do, so can be valuable. Kepri, always good. Same type of thing as Geb, except I think he's just slightly higher skill cap, but if you can master that skill cap, I think he's better than Geb. Knowing when to use your two, knowing when to pull, knowing when to root, I think he's got some of the most important ability usage out of almost all supports. The way you use them, how you use them, when you use them really changes depending on the type of comp you're playing and the type of comp the enemy's playing. And then the depth of usage with his ult is also very rarely used in ranked. It's a lot of time just ulting somebody as their one health so that you can revive them. I think he's still always going to be at least good. The problem is he has some laning phases that he really struggles with and that's why I won't put him into always great. Because if you play him into a laning phase where you're just going to get ran at, like playing Kepri into a Horus Cern, you're going to get killed a lot and you're going to be pretty useless until you hit level 7, 8 and get some items. Kumba! I'll put him in can be a counter because he's better than all these characters, but just don't play him. He just does such little stuff compared to every other support. Just, he can be a counter, sure. If the enemy picks Kali or Baka, maybe. I would stay away from him. Kuzumbo. I'm still on the train that Kuzumbo is absolutely busted. Warflag, Pridwin, Prophetic. His build right now is so impossible to play against if, if he's like not just getting just smoked. If he gets the late game, he's going to 1v5, Fire Blink, Thorns, and then Predwin Prophetic, and then whatever else you want, Manticores, Contagions, whatever it is, does not matter. If you get to late game on Kuzumbo, he's a genuine 1v5 god, unless they're playing just a super defensive, maybe Kepri or something like that. But even then, you can get a like a 1v2 dive kill. He does have his weaknesses. He's not great in laning phase. He's got some matchups that he struggles in, but I think he'll always at least be a good character. Maui, it sucks to say it, but I think he's a pretty bad pick in ranked. He's very team reliant. If you're pulling somebody, you want them dead. If you're dropping your two down, you want somebody to travel with you. You need them to jump into it quickly because timing is very important because you run out of that area for his two and then the two disappears. If you jump in, you're committing. If you land it all, you want that person getting blown up. And a lot of this just relies on your teammates. And if your ally's getting dove and he's not playing very well and you're trying to peel him out it's skill shots that you have to hit and you have to kind of like outplay the enemy diver which is never something you want to do uh, as a skill shot reliant god so i think he's can be a counter he's still so good in comp and he's, he's very very good at a a level where you can rely on your teammates but i'm gonna put him in can be a counter because i think there's just better options a lot of times naja i think he's the best assassin support but i still don't think he's very good if you get a lead he can kind of 1v5 i think war flag prophetic the regrowth build that all, all that good stuff late game you can kind of smurf a little bit, but you have very not great forms of peel. Same as Maui, you're relying on your skill shots to hit to kind of peel. But if you do get that lead, you get ahead. He can dominate a game. Nox. I think Nox might be a bit underrated at a competitive level. I think she's still going to be very good, and I think she's got some really good matchups against the top tiers. But in ranked, you're kind of the same as Fafni. You're relying on this skill shot of your one. If you're hitting your ones, great God, she's incredible. If you're not able to hit your ones and you're just using your two to kind of interrupt abilities, she can still be okay. And as long as you can hit your alt, she can still be okay. But the alt nerf on top of just her two being a an ability that you're not using for damage or you're just using it for a silence, she's just kind of limited if you're not hitting the one. But if you're hitting the one, you're feeling hot. She can be very, very good. And she can be very, very good into some of these top tiers. She's got a pretty weak laning phase where if she falls behind, she's just going to get walked at and she can't really engage too well. But I'm going to put her into can be valuable just on the off chance that you're like, I'm feeling good. I'm going to play this character. For ease of use, I'm putting Shiva into always good. He is such an easy character to play and an easy character to master. 
And if you get a lead on him, you can kind of smurf a little bit and dominate games. He's got some bad matchups. And if he falls behind, you're going to be useless because you're not able to kill anyone. But his laning phase is very good. He should win a lot of laning phase, a lot of laning phases. And he's really good laning against a lot of these top tiers where if they are playing the game even partially incorrect you can kind of kill them a lot of the times but you're not gonna be able to kill them by yourself you still have to rely on your ally to hit some autos so it's risky but i i think he's just super easy to use so i'm gonna put him into the always good tier sobek can be a counter if the enemy's 2v2 is really bad and you can get a lead sobek is very good but you're relying on that. And if you're even or behind, you can't pluck and you just kind of die. I think I would risk it and try to go prophetic on him anytime I played him, even though he doesn't stack prophetic all that well, just because that mitigation is very good on you. That prophetic is a lot more valuable on you than like a Thebes or a Sov. Sov specifically falls off super quickly. And then Thebes doesn't scale nearly as well as prophetic as long as you can get it stacked. And at the off chance the game goes late and you have prophetic, even if you're at 28, 29 stacks, if you hit that 30th stack, you'll just be a super tanky crocodile that can at least disrupt a little bit. Sylvanas, I'm going to put him in stay away because he's such a risky character. I I'm going to put both of these right now. Both Sylv and Ymir are good supports at the competitive, competitive level. And if you have an ally you can rely on, they can be good characters. But if you fall behind or if you're even and you're wandering by yourself any points, you're kind of just going to be dying. Walls destroy you. Slows destroy you. Instant hard CCs destroy you. Even like soft CCs like Roots kind of destroy you. So it's just risky. I would stay away from them unless you're just super comfortable and super confident on them. I also think Sylvanas specifically compared to Ymir, it's kind of hard to play Sylvanas at like a good level. Ymir, you can kind of throw up walls and maybe get lucky or get like a big freeze and your team can kind of win off that. Sylvanas, your, your three and your one are pretty hard skill shots to hit. And if you miss those, you, you can kind of die before the ability even comes back off cooldown. So it's a little risky. I wouldn't recommend them. They can be counters into some characters, but it's just not worth the hassle. Play some of these easier, better characters. Terra, I'll say it. Click alt and you're going to be useful. If the enemy has onk, it'll feel a little bit worse, but just alt the enemy so they take a little extra damage and they also take that burst damage. She's just such a strong character. She's very safe. She's got a couple counters. Cripples, gods like Ardeo and Ares play pretty well into her. But even then, if you're getting like ulted by Ares, you just beads it. If he's solo ulting you to the point where you, you go beads and he continues doing it just to force your beads, he's going to be useless the rest of the game also outside of his just base ability. So you're playing with no beads or no relic, but he's playing with no ult. Like that's a win in my book. She's very good in laning phase. Her level three is probably the strongest in the game. Her level five is one of the strongest in the game. She can build literally any relic in the game. She can play dive. She can play peel. She can play healing. She can play bait, like whatever you want. Terra can do it. She's very strong. I would put her into always great, but she does have a couple of those hard counters like Ganesh. Actually, all three of these characters are good into her. So maybe that's why she doesn't reach that top tier, but she's still always going to be at least good. Xing Chen, does the enemy team have four auto attackers and your one is useful? Xing Chen is at, okay, kind of. Do they have three auto attackers and two of them you can never hit? Stay away. It's very simple. This character is a solo laner that's also kind of disguised as a support. I personally just think he's very bad. He's he's somewhat hard to kill because of how slippery he is. But even then, like, who cares? He doesn't do damage. He's not threatening. He's, his CC is meh. He can be a counter, but I think he kind of leans down towards stay away too. And the reason I'm putting Kumba up here and not down here with these two is he's so much easier to play and he's so much safer to play. So that's why. And then last one, Yamoja. The classic, how many games or how comfortable on your, are you on Yamoja? Have you never played her before? Five games? You never hit abilities with her? Stay away. Are you God's gift? Have you never missed an ult? Has every stun you've ever tossed out stun, stun somebody or stun a tower? She's always going to be great. But that's like this wave of where are you going to put her compared to how high your skill level is. I'm going to put her into can be a counter because it is dependent. And I think she has some matchups where she is a lot easier to play into. If you play under something like Terra, Terra's CC is very hard to hit onto Yamoja, and you can kind of wall off the Terra and then just three out if she ever roots you. I think it's a pretty 50-50 matchup, but maybe it benefits Terra a little bit. Yamoja can be a counter. And there it is, 30 supports ranked. This should be the last support one of the year. I'll do, obviously, the big, massive tier list that you guys are like, oh! for later down the line once there's another patch but i hope you guys enjoyed the video hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day i'll see you guys again next time peace